fixer ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're looking great. Uh, how's every, every, uh, did, uh, I didn't think things like this were possible. No, you didn't, huh? Well, I understand there's a baseball team called the Mets. If that's possible, I'm possible. Can anybody come back like, like this? Well, most of us don't want to. As a matter of fact, the application bin is usually empty. But I came back because you need help, son. Look, even if I do need... David, shh, lower your voice. Even if I do need help, I don't see what good you can do me as a 1928 porter. Well, dear, we don't get a choice. I know somebody else who came back as an Edsel. Did I raise my very own son to leave his very own mother sitting on a used car lot? I'll go make a deal with the salesman. <laughs> This town has changed. All this smog. No offense, but you're not helping matters any. Shift. Ooh! Did you ever think of using the clutch? I'm sorry. Does it hurt? Only when I accelerate. Mother! Mom, I wanted to turn left. I know, but I think we'd better rehearse a bit before we get home. Well, I won't forget to use the clutch again. No, no, I mean, rehearse how you're going to explain me to your wife. I know. Why don't you try telling her that my motor is worth twice what you paid for me? Barbara, you say? Do you realize that the motor alone is worth twice what I paid for the whole car? Well, I couldn't do that. Why couldn't you do that? Because I'm going to tell her the truth, that's why. The truth? <laughs> but she'd never believe you. For the sake of your marriage, David, lie. Just lie. Mom! L let me drive. Look, if there's one thing I know, and I mean really know, 
It's my own wife. You don't know me at all, David Crabtree, if you think you can bring this home instead of a station wagon. What happened to your head, Dad? It's all right, Randy. I hit it on the car. Give me one reason why you didn't buy a station wagon instead of this, this pile of junk. No, no, don't tell me. Let me guess. It looks so decrepit and lonely that it almost pleaded with you to take it home, right? Oh, Barb. That's exactly what happened. Barb, Randy, Cindy, I want you all to brace yourselves. This car, th this car right here, did talk to me and, and plead and beg me to take her home. Now, I say her, because this car is my mother. Oh, I, I, I know you're going to find it hard to believe, honey. I, I did, too. Gosh, when, when this car first talked to me, I, I didn't believe it was, it was my mother. <laughs> no, sir. I ask her all, all sorts of questions. Uh, th things that only my mom would know, like, like wh what year it was that I broke my, uh, my, co my collar. And she knew every answer. Then... And only then did I realize that, that this car is mother. Randy, Cindy, would you please go in the house? Your father and I was Honey, let him stay. Uh, after all, it concerns them, too. It, this is, is her grandmother. Dave. Excuse me. When did you first realize this car was your mother? Before or after you hit your head? After? What's that got to do with it? After you hit your head and the car started talking, did it talk words? Sure, honey, regular words. In English, I suppose. Of course, in English, Barbs. What else? Oh, well, I don't know. It could be a foreign car. Even if it was a foreign car, it wouldn't talk a foreign language. It wouldn't? All cars talk English? And all cars don't talk at all, Barbs. They're cars, cars don't talk. <sighs> That's all I was trying to get you to say. Oh, I said it, honey. The cars don't talk. Except this one, and it talks plenty, boy. Believe me, plenty. <laughs> well, what, what do you say we all, all go for a spin around the block, huh? Come on, honey, not in front of the kids. Huh? Randy, Cindy, want to go for a spin around the block? Uh, sorry, Dad, but I have to do my homework. And I'm going to help her. Barb's honey, listen. <laughs> You too, huh? Okay, that does it. That's it, I was wrong. Barb, I'd, I'd like to point out that the motor alone is worth twice what I paid for the whole car. You don't really believe that terrible car is your mother, do you, Dave? It was just another one of your lousy jokes, wasn't it? Uh, that's it, a lousy joke, honey. What kind of joke is that in front of the kids? Lousy, just like you said, it's a lousy joke, and, and I'm sorry. <laughs> You scared me. Well, I'm, I'm awful sorry, honey. At least everything's back to normal now. Not quite. For one thing, we're not speaking. What? And I wouldn't leave that car in the driveway if I were you. Today is trash day. A genuine 1928 Porter before my very eyes. <laughs> I'll get right down to where the rubber meets the road. I am Captain Manzini. I'm an antique car collector. I heard there was a 28 Porter for sale over on the used car lot. When I got there, it was gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I bought it. So I see. Are you a collector, Mr. Uh... Crabtree? David Crabtree. <laughs> no, no, I'm not a collector. Well, I'm interested in buying this car. Why? I've searched all my life for this vintage classic, and you beat me to it, you sly one. <laughs> well, I'll give you $400 for it. That's twice as much as you paid. $400? Uh-oh. I'll fix it. It's a simple matter of disconnecting the klaxon feed cable. I've 
been shocked by six volts before, but mm, never like that. It's a very unusual car, Captain. Yeah, well, uh, as we were saying before, the car so rudely interrupted us. <laughs> I'm sorry, Captain. I, I can't sell the car. You're joking, of course. Cranston, listen. Crabtree. Whatever. I'm in love with this car. It belongs in my magnificent collection. I'll give you $500 for it, eh, Criswell? Crabtree, I I'm sorry, Captain. I, I just can't sell. All right, I'm now prepared to raise my previous offer. What was it, $500? Make it $600, eh, Crenshaw? Crabtree, uh, it's not a matter of, of money, Captain. Of course not. You stick to your guns, no matter what I offer. <laughs> Even $650? Seven. Seven fifty. I'm sorry, Captain. No hard feelings? The hardest. Cranbrook, you have just made yourself an enemy. That's Crabtree. Whatever. Bella couldn't live with himself if he sold his own mother. Honey, I know she didn't talk to you this afternoon, but there was a very good reason for it. Of course there is. Cars don't talk. That's not the reason. She didn't talk to you because Dave, she... Dave, I'm your wife. I know it. And I love you. And I love you too, honey. Well, as one lover to another, enough with your talking brother. Mother. Whatever. All right, I hate to do this to Mom, but it looks like I'm going to... Yeah, you're going to sell it. Yeah, I'm not going to sell it. Come on. Where? To the garage. You're going to eavesdrop while I talk to you. You're something else again. You really are. Dave, this is ridiculous. feel pretty sheepish when you hear what you're going to hear. Hi, Mom. Just thought I'd come down and say good night. <laughs> night. Mom, you sleep already? Mom. Mom, wake up, Mom. Kind of, kind of warm tonight, Mom. How about a, how about a glass of ice water? How about a, a radiator full of iced tea, huh? <laughs> You shouldn't try to trick me, David. How did you know she was there? I saw her in my rearview mirror. How many times do I have to tell you, Davy? No eyewitnesses. The Smithsonian Institute, do you remember? Those drafty floors. To me, she all talks. Those people staring. That's not for me. Boy, does she talk. Just like your father. the big day. You all ready for the beauty treatment? Shampoo, tune-up, paint job, the works. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Sneak a look in my rearview mirror. Uh-oh is right. <laughs>
second life we all come back sooner or later as anything from a pussy cat to a man-eating alligator a way you all may think my story is more fiction than it's fact but believe it or not my mother did decided she'd come back as a car she's a very me through everything I do and I'm so glad she's here. I'm my mother the car. I'm my mother the car. Mom, you look just beautiful. And I feel just beautiful, Davy. Thank you. the old car, Sin, only with a, with a new paint job and some fixing up here and there. <laughs> kind of like Cinderella, huh? <laughs> Dave, it's beautiful. I don't mind it at all now. Thanks, honey. The way you got it fixed up, somebody is sure to buy it. Folks! Ah, Lady Crabtree. Crabtree. Whatever. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Captain Manzini. At your service. Ah, dear lady, how much were you contemplating for this old car? Oh, well... Ah, you drive a hard bargain. So be it. A thousand dollars. A thousand dollars? Cash. What do you think of that, Cranberry? That's Crabtree and no. Dave! Oh, honey. All right, if he won't sell you the porter, I will. Barbs, listen. Now, you can't do that. Just, just give me a little time, that's all. I think I can make you understand why, why it'd be foolish to sell the car. A little time, that's all, Barbs. Of course, Dave. You can have all the time it takes for me to go in the house and find the certificate of ownership. Uh, Barb, Randy, Cindy, would you go in the house for a minute, please? Uh, Mr. Manzini, I wonder yes. if you'd give me just a, a moment of privacy. Please. I'll be glad to. Oh, that's quite a woman you married there, grab bag. She has a mind like a steel trap! Mom, you said it. I didn't. If you came back to help me, now's your chance. Honey, this isn't as big a problem as you think. All you have to do is get Manzini to offer $1,500 for me. Well, see how that solves anything. Get him to make the offer in front of Barbara. But I still don't see... Now, listen. Manzini started out by offering $400, right? Now he's upping the price to $1,000. Doesn't it stand to reason that the longer you hold out, the higher he'll go? Yeah. Captain? What? Offer me $1,500 for the car. It's a bit steep, isn't it, Crab Cake? Crabtree, $1,500, that's my price. Well, in a manner of speaking, you've got me in a garage. Very well, open the door, here's $1,500. No, not here, offer it to me in front of my wife. In front of his wife? What is she, a notary public? Hi, honey. Listen, Barbs, I've got an idea. I've got a better one. Where's Captain Manzini? Listen, Barbs, Captain Manzini first offered us $400 for the car. Then a little later on, he came back and offered a thousand dollars. Doesn't it only stand the reason that the longer we hold out, the higher his price will go? He'll offer us fifteen hundred dollars for the car. Oh, he'll never go that high. Oh yes, he will. He won't. He will. He won't. He will. Fifteen hundred dollars and the car is mine. One, two, three, Captain. Four, five, no. six, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. No. I can't accept your offer. You promised, you told me, you said you would. Were you dirty? Captain, please. A deft ploy, Crumpet. That's Crabtree. Whatever. You haven't seen the last of Captain Mancini. Good day, Captain Bandini. It's Manzini. Whatever. It happened just the way you said it would. Yeah. When did you suddenly start getting so shrewd? When I bought that car.
money get the children? Anything you say, dear. We're gonna have dinner where the whole family could be together. Like I said, where the whole family can be together. you with a Manzini problem, didn't I? No offense, Mother, but there wouldn't have been a Captain Manzini problem if you hadn't come back to help me. It's only the beginning. It is? Sure, that's what mothers are for. Oh, and darling, thank you for today. It was the nicest homecoming day a 1928 Porter ever had. Welcome home, Mom. Ah, oh, Davy, they're gorgeous. Good night, Mom. Good night, dear. It's been a long day, but a nice one. Everybody knows in the second life we all come back sooner or later. As anything from a pussy cat to a man eating alligator. The way you all may think my story is more fiction than it's fact. But believe it or not, my mother did decided she'd come back as a car. She's a very own guiding star. A 1928-40. That's my mother dear. She helps me through everything I do, and I'm so glad.